How did music come into your life? Um, my dad, um, whenever we were when we were little, my dad was a musician and he played in the clubs. Um, he was he was in a band that he would play drums and he was the lead singer for the band. They play clubs all the time. So from a very young age, my dad had a big old vinyl collection that he was playing. You know, he was exposing me to Michael Jackson and. I mean, Michael Jackson was probably my biggest hero back then. You know, the Thriller album when that came out. <laughs> you among me. I just remember playing it all over, over, and over. And they, they even tell a story of I got in trouble because I'd draw Michael Jackson crayons on the wallpaper, like stick figures of Michael Jackson. <laughs> I was just all in for that. But, right. yeah. So Michael Jackson would be my earliest influence of music that I remember. Can uh, you put a year on that? 1984. Okay, yeah. That's, yeah. That's the Michael Jackson era. Yep, yeah, 1984. And my dad, he listened to the Commodores. He listened to a lot of different styles of music. Um, um, he was very eclectic in his music. Um, and he was he was just different, man. So, mm -hmm. But then he became a... He became a Christian, and Change. all that, because he was one that he he can't he was he was a wild dude. Like he was into drugs and mm -hmm. and and partying all the time. I mean, I can remember our house being full of, you know, the cousins. We'd be upstairs, and they'd be all downstairs drunk, and mm -hmm. that was just how we did it. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, for me, he says it wasn't that it was a progress, but for me, in my mind, it was like an overnight change where all of a sudden we're going to church every Sunday and no more parties and he even because he was so new to the faith he thought he had to get rid of everything that he that he did before so he broke my Michael Jackson Thriller record oh. he, uh, he uh, sold all his drums I mean it was a crazy wow. deal so was that his instrument that he played was the drums? In drums, yeah. Okay. He played guitar too, but his main instrument was the drums. Yeah. So I always had the beat, mm -hmm. you know. But then uh, as we started going to church, the he didn't trust nobody. So cuz he like I said he was not a church person. So when he started going to church, it was uh, you know, he didn't trust anybody, so he wouldn't put me in Sunday school or anything like that cuz he didn't know mm -hmm. people and so I'd have to sit up there. He started playing drums for the church. And I'd have to sit right next to him every service, right. uh, and I'd watch him play the drums. And sure. so that's where I fell in love with the drums, and then I started like beating on them myself and started getting into it. So that's yeah, man. That's where it began. 1984. Hip hop was really getting big in Kansas City, and it was hitting my neighborhood hard. Mm -hmm. And everybody was listening to stuff, but my parents, you know, what I'm saying like my dad would not let us listen to anything but Christian music. And so um, I was listening to Carmen. I was listening to Petra. Like these are Christian groups, and they weren't they weren't that great. They weren't as good as I mean they were good, but they weren't they just weren't like what I was listening to before. I got you. So um, then I started hearing hip hop in the streets, and I did. I said, Dad, I want to listen to rap. Well, he took me down to uh, Blue Ridge Mall, and there was this. Um, Christian bookstore there called Heaven Sent, mm -hmm. and he took me there, and there was one cassette <laughs> that said "Wrap It Up," <laughs> and uh, it had it was a compilation of all these rappers, Christian rappers, mm -hmm. and I put that in my cassette player, and I I ate it up, wow. and I that was at that point I knew that's what I wanted to do. What year was that? That was 1988. Mm -hmm. 1988. Wow, wrap it up. 1988. That's what started the 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 beginning for your love of gospel hip hop. Yep, okay. exactly. And so um, then my dad, um, you know, we started going to Sheffield. At that time, we we had went to a smaller church, and then we we left there and went to Sheffield. And Sheffield was awesome because Pastor Westlake, his whole heart was to reach people in as many ways as possible. And even though he was an old white guy, he had a heart for the hood. And so he would bring in all these guys that were on this wrap it up mm -hmm. cassette tape. Like I, I couldn't believe it. I first concert I ever saw, Christian co concert I ever saw was at Sheffield Christian Hip Hop. It was PID. He brought them, <laughs> and I was like, man, these. And so I got, I got exposed. I was lucky to be in a place at the right time where he was bringing all these people in, and he wasn't shunning them. He was letting them do their thing. Mm -hmm. So like you hear stories of churches that would be like, nah, we ain't bringing hip rap here. Sure. It's of the devil. 
I wasn't in that world at our church. And so it was a very awesome place for me. I think it it saved my life because I probably would have not wanted to be into Christian music if that wouldn't have been the the venue. And so, um, yeah. And then that's whenever I started trying to do my own thing and started right. trying to rap myself. So. Do you remember, you said rapping, but, but music has always kind of been your deal. Do you remember your first rap and then maybe your first instrument? So my first instrument was drums, okay. so that's for sure. And I was playing, I couldn't reach the, the floor, so mm-hmm. I would just play the snare, mm-hmm. and the hi-hat and the snare. And um, they had gospel tracks uh, where they would uh, like uh, make like instrumentals of the, of the Christian rap songs, like DC Talk had a lot of those. Right. And so I would buy those and I would perform those in children's church just their songs right. i would cover their songs right. and so that's how i started learning how to like perform mm-hmm. and then it was like i was nine years old whenever i said i want to do my own i want to write my own lyrics mm-hmm. and so the first song i ever did i used a pid instrumental <laughs> and wrote it my own wrote my own song called uh, dear heavenly father i pray wow. and uh it was like dear heavenly father i pray that I will do everything you say. Dearly Father, I pray that I will do everything your way. And then I was like, Dearly Father, I pray that I will get good grades. Dearly Father, I pray that I will not get AIDS. <laughs> well, so, what, what yeah. a complicated ride scheme. Oh, man, it was, was, it was, yeah. So it was, oh, yeah. And so my dad, um, you know, Sheffield was, was down in the projects they had uh, saturday super church mm-hmm. and then they started sidewalk super church where they would take trucks and they would go down and actually be like in wayne minor projects or choto projects or mm-hmm. lincoln gardens granat they'd set up and do church down there right and so my dad was in charge of one of those rigs mm-hmm. and so mikey get out there and rap and i get booed rocks thrown at me you know what i'm saying but it made me get better right for sure for yeah, sure so that was it yeah and that was all around 88 89 yep. 90 90 yeah wow okay yeah yep. again we're here with mr mike Tospin, top spin the hip-hop artist extraordinaire we was just leaving off where you were starting your rap career, getting rocks thrown at you. But of course, we know you did not stop. So where did it go from there? So yeah, um, in middle school, I started going to uh, Lincoln, and uh, it was a great experience for me. Honestly, I it was crazy because like I was one of the only white kids in that school, mm-hmm. um, but I got immersed in the culture. Um, and it made me it made me who I am today. And the first thing I remember was doing. Uh, they had a rap. They the the whole school district had this contest where they'd write a song about staying in school. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my music teacher, her name was Miss Trinita Miller. She she uh, she saw what was in me. Mm-hmm. And so me and a group of kids, we got together and we wrote it. We we took Mary J. Blige's uh, Real Love mm-hmm. and we we called it Real Job. <laughs> and we made this whole thing. We had a camcorder and we filmed it when I rapped and the, ki- the girls would sing on it and we had this whole thing. And so we sent that in and we won. Wow. And so then they took us to a professional recording studio and we they had a producer that redid the whole song like made it a whole different way it's kind of cheesy but you know it was still professional right. and so we went in and it was first time i ever recorded on a microphone first time i ever saw pro tools and it was it was it was crazy and so we did that and then we shot a professional music video and then the whole school got k swiss shoes from Foot Locker. so every kid got a brand new pair of k swiss really? shoes wow. and this was when they were real popular so for sure what i was, was that was 1993 mm-hmm. and i was that year i never got picked on anymore i was cool <laughs> i was rapping little white mike little, little white mike so, white mike <laughs> uh, but uh yeah and so at that time uh i met uh my best friend josh wesley mm-hmm. his dad uh was uh, brought on by pastor westlake as as one of the associate pastors and uh um we were you know he saw that i was rapping and he said him and his brother had a little rap thing going but his brother wasn't really wanting to do it no more Mm -hmm. and so i was like let's do it right and so we uh we didn't have we had just like instrumentals matter of fact it's kind of really funny so he had a cousin that um so 
his cousin Bub was part of this group called Mass 187. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember them. Yes, I do. Yeah, and Forgot so about him. yeah, wow. Bub, Bub is uh, Bub is the son of Keith Wesley from New Life in Christ mm -hmm. in Grandview, but he was in that group, and so he had another. So Josh had two cousins that were you know they hung out, and this other cousin told us that he made beats for. Uh, Mass one eighty seven. Mass one eighty seven. He was lying, right. but uh, we didn't know because we didn't listen to sec. We didn't have any access to secular music. Right. So he played this beat for us, and he's like, "Y'all can have this, bro. This mug is dope." And we we're like, "Oh, that's one of the dopest beats I've ever heard. Thank you." So we wrote this song called "Throw Your Hands Up," but later on, I found out <laughs> it was Two Shorts Cocktails beat. <laughs> So we'd be in church, right, playing cocktails, but rapping uh, right. Christian right. stuff over uh, right. cocktails beat. Right. So yeah, that was that's a funny little. Which story. was a popular thing to do because I think gospel hip hop was trying to make its way into mainstream, or at least try to get some ears to it. Yeah, so it was popular to take. Yeah. So man, we we did that, and we you know we were we were getting better and better. Um, and uh, every camp, so our whole thing was about rapping at Sheffield. Anytime we got to open for one of the artists they brought in, that's that was what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And every year at camp, they'd have a, a talent contest, and we were trying to beat everybody. Right. That was our plan, you know. And then when they started doing, uh, the Simba's of God had fine arts, and they had never had a rap category. Wow. And so we went the first year, and we rapped like we do in the streets. Right. And they said rap is not a fine art, right. and they were like, it was almost like racist type stuff. But right. we were, we were like, okay, we're gonna simplify it. We came back the next year, rapping like nursery rhymes, <laughs> like Jesus, like, like the, my first rap. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, and uh, we won the whole thing, and we created. Uh, we were the ones that created that rap category. They wow. still have that rap career. So what year was today. that? That was 94, 94. So y'all actually were the pioneers of the rap category in, in the fine arts. Yeah. Wow. I Beautiful. know that for sure. Beautiful. So, um, uh, and then uh, Damon started coming along. Damon was Damon uh, was our background dancer mm -hmm. at first. <laughs> and actually, Ray Vaughn, Ray Vaughn came on before Damon, if I'm really thinking it right, because, right. so Ray Vaughn, Ray Vaughn is straight from the streets. Like, Ray Vaughn would... Yeah. Rayvon, yeah, he would. He, I'll just say this: he sell drugs to go to U camp. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's what he came from. He's, and he's, he's, he's push that on tape. He, yeah, I put that on tape. Sorry, no, he right. did too. Yeah, he did yeah, too. I, I interviewed him. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know, what I'm saying like he just that's 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 who he was. But um, he was a he was a sweet dude, and and uh, I, I me and him oath, uh, uh, at camp we just clicked, and so we were like he was like, hey, can I be down with y'all? And we we're like, yeah. So he joined the group first. And he would, he never write, wrote his stuff. He'd always freestyle it. And so you never knew what he was going to say. He'd say he wrote it, but he never wrote it. And you just never knew, okay, what's this dude going to say this time? And is he going to get, you know, what is he going to do? So he, but he always came through. He had really great stage presence and it was just, it was great. And so, uh, and then me and him ended up going to school together. So we were always around each other. And then, and then Damon was our background dancer. Well, then Damon started picking up trying to rap. And at first he was like almost nursery rhyme sounding too. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happened, but he just, all of a sudden it just clicked and he started just like yes. really coming to his own and like becoming a dope MC. And it was just like, it was amazing. So we had this super group of all different styles of rap mm -hmm. coming together and we were all different kind of nationalities in some fashion or form. So it made us very diverse. And so when we would, and we just knew how to get on the stage and rock it. That's true. Now, what year was this? This was 96. No, uh, 95, 96, somewhere around there. 95. So this would be the beginnings of S E T A P R T. Yeah. <laughs> Set apart. Set apart, man. Set and so, apart. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, that, that name actually was given to us by Kevin Brown, mm -hmm. who was at the church. Um, I give him props for that. And then mm -hmm. we, you know, we started doing shows. Uh, the youth pastor at the time, he would get us, uh, he would take us with him. He would, he preach all around. Right. Um, matter of fact, that's where, I think that's probably, if my memory uh, strikes me right, maybe whenever I first met you somewhere around in those times, but mm -hmm. I met, I know that's where I met Devin Taylor because mm -hmm. we, uh, 
we we wrapped at uh, Bishop Jordan's church, right? And he was the youth pastor there at that time, and so that was the first time I met Devin, right? And then those connections I always had, like I just everywhere I went, I would like be a student of making connections with these pastors and these people, right? So we could come back, right? Without the youth pastor, right. and so that's what we started doing. Mm-hmm. Like during the summer, we would spend our whole summer doing shows all over the churches in Kansas City, mm-hmm. and people knew us, and we, we were, you know, we were going. We, I mean, that's all we did, and then we'd go to youth camps, uh, different places, and so then, uh, yeah, man, that's whenever DJ V came on the scene. <laughs> that was yeah. 1998 or 97, 98, probably 98. Yeah, 98. 98. Yeah, probably. We were, we were, so uh, we had. As far as beats were concerned back then, um, I was trying to make beats, but I didn't have like the. Ch- I only had the church keyboard, so I was I was trying to do stuff. Um, and then we also had Jeff Hill. He made some beats for us, but they they still weren't just up to par. But we were kind of on the vibe of we needed a live DJ, and I remember that we wanted to do kind of like what we had seen Grits, and we were like we want to do what Grits is doing with the live element of a DJ bringing in instrumentals back and forth, creating like different styles, and then all of a sudden the Lord brought us DJ V. Man, it was like it was like it was crazy, man. And and so those were some nice times, most definitely. Yeah, and DJ V, he he's like a father figure to us. He <laughs> keep us in line, tell us, you know, reality. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we didn't, you know what I'm saying? We we thought we knew what we were talking about, and he would just be like, Yeah, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. And so, yeah. And, These are funny times. <laughs> yeah. And uh we had many trips. I remember going to St. Louis, man, wow. and yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. We went to St. Louis. We yes. stayed in somebody's house, man. Yes. Somebody somebody's house. But yeah, we, we, we kicked it, man. And uh yeah, those those were good days, man. So oh, most definitely. We're here with Mr. Mike Tospin. Top spin. Yeah. Oh man, the rapper ever been rapping, been doing everything. But yeah. now you're trying to transition into actually doing some music, man. So what are you doing now? Who do you work with? So yeah, right after Set Apart, we uh, you know I started doing solo stuff, but then um, I met my wife, and my wife was challenging me that I needed to go to school, and I was like. I'm from the hood. Uh, my education is really bad. Right. I don't know if I can do that. She's like, but you really have a gift in this stuff. And so so we checked out a few schools. And actually, uh, one of my other friends was at Kansas City, Kansas Community College and told me about this audio engineering program that they had. I was like, all right, well, I'll go check it out. And so I went in there, walked in there, and just fell in love. Wow. And uh, that was... That was amazing. So I went in there and started going to school. I had to, so just to kind of put in perspective of how bad it was with my education, I had to start with elementary math like most and of us. Um, did went all the way up. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, but I I worked hard. I ended up graduating in the, uh, the dean's honor list, and you know what I'm saying like I was top of my class with that degrees and all that stuff. What year was that? That was uh, two thousand. I graduated in two thousand seven. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I got married in two thousand six five four. It's two thousand four. So yeah, it was two thousand six. No, maybe two thousand two thousand six. I I forget I that part. That that was like an old jumble. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then. When I got out, I thought, oh, I'm gonna try and get a job in these studios. I was real ambitious. Um, And unfortunately for most people, um, that is not the case. Like I tell people, if you're going into this this thing, you need to know that money, you're not gonna hit it big. Like, you're just, it's not really where it's at. But I do think God had his hand on me because um, what I ended up doing, I went to like, three or four of the studios in town. And I gave them my resume, let them hear some of my stuff that I'd mixed in school. And uh, all of them said, you know, one was like, you could intern here, but you gotta do it for free. And I was married, uh, I needed to have a job, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't do that. So what I did was um, I invested in a computer and uh, I just had a computer and a little hardware interface and a cheap mic and down in our basement we put carpet up on the walls <laughs> and I just had all those connections right. with all those rappers right. that I had built up over the years mm-hmm. and I said come down here $25 now I'll record you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so started doing that and it just grew and grew and grew and I had a gift because I could hear music a lot 
really well. So I was able to mix uh, with even that stuff, the stuff I was mixing, people were like, wow, you know what I'm saying? To the point that one of the places that, um, one of the places that I had applied for that I really wanted to go was Chapman uh, Recording. Right. Uh, Chuck Chapman called me and said, hey, um, I've been hearing, some of my clients have come in and they've recorded with you and I've hear, heard your stuff and I want to talk to you about hiring you. Wow. And so I went from working in my basement studio to getting to work with all this multi-million dollar equipment wow. and uh, getting to be in the studio with Tech9. What year was that? That was 2007. Yeah, wow. that was 2007. I got to work with, got to be in there with Tech9, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of, of, of different things and right. multi-million dollar equipment. And um, so I was doing that. I did that for uh, off and on three years. It's kind of a crazy story I won't go into, mm -hmm. but I, I was there for three years and then I decided to go back and do my home studio. And so we went back in the Grandview place and I remodeled the Grandview studio and I built an actual sound booth and had like a little, upgraded the equipment more. And um, I just took off from there with Top Spin Productions and I was able to, um, I was able to do that full time for a while. And then, uh, then I was going to this church evangel and uh, they, um, they were in need of a tech director. And at that time I didn't really see myself doing that mm -hmm. but as i prayed about it um i was like okay let me let me at least explore it and long story short i've been doing tech directing of churches for the last um uh, 15 years now mm -hmm. and i i actually was down in uh for the last eight years i was down in lawton oklahoma uh running all the production for uh, a large church that like a three thousand uh congregation church with uh cameras and um, switchers and audio and all kinds of stuff. It was just crazy. And so then full circle, I'm back here and I'm still doing music, producing, making beats and do a few studio sessions here and there, but pretty much all focused on the church now doing that. So it's been yeah, cool. we're here with Mike Topspin of Topspin Productions, man. What's going on for the future? And if people want to contact you, because you did do a very, very Grammy, how should I say it? Grammy est song called Party Pup. <laughs> <laughs> For me. Yes, yes, sir. Which is featured on the DJs and Entertainment uh, channel. Nice. Uh, but nonetheless, man, you are a great producer, man. Yes. So, so yeah, if you uh, if you want, uh, you know, we I'm still doing studio sessions from time to time. If you're looking for somebody that you want to do a project with and uh, you have to work around my schedule, you know what I'm saying, uh, but you want to do something with quality, um, then I'm, I'm your go-to guy. Um, and uh, so you can hit me up at MikeyTospin at gmail.com. That's M-I-K-E-Y-T-O-S-S-P, -S -S like Paul, O-N at gmail.com. And uh, you can hit me up there. Um, also, making beats. My beats are real affordable. Um, I try to make them affordable for people because I know how it was for me coming up. And I, I just do it for the love. Like when you see me making beats, it's because I just love doing it. It's kind of therapy for me. Right. But um, I definitely am all about business and trying to help people. So um, yeah, and future things, um, I am thinking about, I haven't even talked to you V about this, but uh, I will, it's still in the early phases in my head. Um, I've got other things I'm dealing with personally, and I'm, but my plan is, we have such a great venue here. We did a we did a KB a Christian rapper KB. We had a concert uh, last fall that just was it was sold out mm -hmm. and it was crazy. But I have been I have noticed that there is still there is not. Uh, venues anymore like the Chub or other places <laughs> wow. anymore for gospel hip hop guys. And it's like there's a lot of little there's a lot of Christian rappers out there still, wow. but they don't have those places anymore that we used to have yeah. that we could come together and network and just connect and be able to showcase our skills. Right. And I think I'm at the place where I may be starting to at least try to uh, entertain that, okay. even if it's like. Um, a quarterly deal right it may not be like every weekend you know what i'm saying because i'm i'm busy but for sure um i am i am really considering that and then also like as we do um that you know that you know some of the artists that come to show you know their talent 
we can be like, hey, you could open for, you know, right. so and so when we do a regional or national act right. here, you know, so because we're going to be for it. They're going to be doing it, so yeah. Okay. I'm hoping for it. Let yes, me know. Sir. Well, it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah. DJs and entertainment. Thanks, Mr. Mike Tospin yeah. of Top Spin Productions. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. What's up? What's up? We're here with Mike Tospin or Top Spin. <laughs>